bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Praise God. Amen. Well, tonight, guys, it is Tuesday. It is 7 o'clock. So I am continuing our series, Five Women, Five Weeks. And tonight we are talking about the Deborah anointing. I am very excited tonight. If you cannot see, I am. So we're going to talk about being a woman of power and influence. Amen. So how to walk in this anointing to become a great leader. So we're going to uh, talk about wisdom, courage, and humility. I believe these are some of the most uh, strongest attributes that Deborah possessed in order to become, in order to be the great leader that God, God had called her to be. Amen. So we're going to talk about wisdom, courage, and humility. So I'm going to open up in a word of prayer and we're going to get right started. Amen. Father God, it is in the precious name of Jesus. Lord God, I just bless your name. I thank you so much tonight, oh God, just um, for watching over us, Lord, for um, always being our guide, God, and always showing us your mercy. Lord God, I thank you for each and every person that's coming on here tonight. God, I thank you for the uh, encore of women that you are gathering during this time, Lord God, to walk in some of the most powerful anointing that you have bestowed on women in history, oh God. I, I just know and believe that, again, this lesson is not by mistake, Lord God, that you, God, ordained this. So, Father, we give you praise and we give you honor tonight. Lord, I know that you are with us. God, enlighten us, Father. Give us your wisdom, God, and give us the heart to obey. Give us the ears to hear what saith the Lord tonight. We give you honor and we give you praise. Amen in Jesus name. All right. So again, we're going to talk about wisdom, courage, and humility. So we are introduced to Deborah in the book of Judges, Judges chapter four. And I'm going to read a few verses um, from the book, but I just want to give like a little background into this. Um, and I've read like a few um, scriptures out of the book of Judges. I am familiar with the story of Deborah. But in doing this research, I really was enlightened. I thank God for that and for his wisdom and knowledge. So during this time, the book of Judges um, was during a time period between the death of Joshua. So as we know, Joshua... Uh, proceeded Moses in bringing the children of Israel into the promised land, into Canaan. So Judges covers the time period between Joshua's death and the ministry of Samuel. During that, the prophet Samuel, during that time, there were no kings to rule over Israel. So God had implemented 12 judges during this time. Deborah was one of them. Amen. So I just wanted to uh, bring that little bit of information um, to the Bible study. You know, and during also during this time, you know, this was just like a perpetual cycle that the children of Israel had went through. And it's, it's much like us. You know, we go through periods. The children of Israel went through periods where, you know, they knew God's law. They received God's commandments and they followed them for a bit. And then they became rebellious. And good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining me. Um, they became rebellious and they did their own thing. You know, and the scripture says that they did what they thought was right in their own eyes. And so God punishes them. And then they cry out to the Lord for deliverance. And God in his mercy and in his love for us, he answers, he delivers them. And they promise to obey. 
but for a while and then they find the self again this is the perpetual cycle that the children of Israel found themselves in so again during this time in Judges this was from the death of Joshua to the ministry of the prophet Samuel during that time there were no kings and so uh, the Lord had implemented uh, these 12 judges during this time and Deborah was one of them so I'm going to read uh, Judges 4 this is the introduction to uh, Deborah and it reads and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord for Jabin had 900 chariots of iron, and for 20 years he had harshly oppressed the children of Israel. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at that time. And she would sit under the palm tree of Deborah, between Ramah and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim, and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Then she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinoam from Kadesh and Nephtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, Go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor. Take with you 10,000 men of the sons of Nephtali and the sons of Zebulun. And against you, I will deploy Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude at the river Kishon, and I will deliver him into your hand. And Barak said to her, if you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And there's an exclamation point there. I just want to uh, let you all know that. Verse 9, so she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. So here, this is where we are introduced to Deborah. So what do we know about Deborah from these scriptures. One, we know that she was a judge appointed by the Lord. And actually she was the fourth judge to rule over Israel. She was the one and only female judge that God appointed. And just doing my study and doing the research, you know, everyone has a school of thought. You know, everyone is kind of like trying to get into the mind of God. Why did God appoint a woman during this time? You know, were there not any men around for, you know, God to use? And I guess I have my own school of thought in that um, God can use whomever he wants. And so, you know, who are we to question why God used Deborah? Deborah was available, although she was a woman. And women were not seen in such high regard, I understand, during this time. But God is sovereign. And he can use whomever he chooses. So understand, women of God that are listening, do not feel that, you know, we are undervalued. Or God doesn't look at us as um, fit to be leaders, you know. I know that there are some that do not believe in women pastors, do not believe in women holding offices of an apostle. But I know some powerful pastors, women of God. And, you know, God's anointing is just that. So whether it falls upon a man or whether it falls upon a woman, that is God's choice. So during this time, this Deborah was whom God had chosen during this time. So know and understand, I really want us to get that. We are not to be underrated. We are not to be overlooked. We're not to be devalued because we do have uh, value in ministry, not only in ministry, but again, I'm going to use this phrase in our sphere of influence. We have something that, you know, inside of us that men do not have. And God, that's how he made us. And so that is what uh, made part of Deborah's anointing so powerful 
which is one of the things that we're going to talk about, was her wisdom. She had godly wisdom and she had to have that. Look at the many hats that she that she wore. She was a prophetess. She was a judge. She was a wife. And she was really looked upon as like the mother of Israel during that time. The scripture says that people came to her from all over Israel for her to settle issues and situations. That is what judges did during that time. So the description of wisdom is the quality of having experience, having knowledge, and good judgment. It is the soundness of action or decision. You know, and this reminds me, when, when I read that, it reminded me of uh, the word a sage. And a sage is someone, I mean, I, I've read it before, like in Greek mythology, but I've also read it, um, the, the word or the, the, the person that is considered a sage is someone that has like a divine uh, wisdom. And knowledge. And they liken this to like a Jewish scholar or a teacher, a rabbi. So this knowledge was God given, you know, wisdom beyond measure. So this just reminded me of Deborah. She had she had a tough job, you know, one being a woman, but she had a tough job to rule over Israel and for having, you know, to have people to come to her with issues and problems, whether it was land or personal issues. And also she led a military revolt. So, you know, this wisdom that she had, and this is part of her anointing, and this is an a, a intricate part of leadership, is having godly wisdom to be able to rule. You know, wisdom should govern um, all aspects of our life. So as we are finding ourselves, you know, holding different offices, and I'm not just talking about ministry. This could be on your job. This could be in your household. This could be in a, you know, I know quite a few women that are um, mentors. They are mentoring young women out in a community, how to carry themselves, how to, um, you know, balance life and balance just them being young women, young teens, how to balance all of these things. You know, that level of wisdom, that's what draws, that's what drew people to Deborah. And part of that wisdom is having stability. You know, we have to be stable minded. When we are wanting to be or looking to um, be a leader, we have we can't be double-minded. The scripture tells us that a double-minded man or woman, a double-minded person is what? Unstable in all of their ways. Imagine Deborah being wishy-washy. Imagine Deborah straddling the fence. Imagine her not being able to uh, hear from God, not only as a judge, but as a prophet, to hear from the Lord to settle disputes. So when we are finding ourselves, women of God, and wanting to be in these positions, having stability, having a stable mind, having a mind set on God and not allowing our emotions. And we are emotional beings. There's nothing wrong with that. But as long as our emotions do not cloud our judgment and it does not deter from hearing from God and being even killed because we, we, we have people that are following us. We have people that are looking up to us. So Deborah had to be stable in all of her ways. It says that she sat underneath of the palm tree, Deborah. That was the name of the palm tree. I thought that was wonderful. She sat under the tree and people from all over Israel came to her. 
So that's a lot that she had to carry, being a wife and, you know, a judge, a prophet, all of these things that she had going on. She had to walk in this level, this anointing of, of godly wisdom in order to be effective. You know, many of us are wearing different hats. I uh, think of myself as, you know, a prophetess. I think of myself as an evangelist. That is my ministry. But I'm also a wife. I'm also a mother. I'm a sister. I'm an auntie. I work and I'm, I am an employee. So I have to walk in this level of wisdom that will keep me even killed for the positions that I have to, that I have to hold. And so if we want to call ourselves being in leadership, wanting people to follow us, wanting to be, uh, you know, in charge, supervisors or mentors, we have to have a stable mind. We have to walk in stability. The Lord tells us, I would want, I would rather for you to be hot or cold. Because lukewarm, I can't do anything with you because I can't trust you. That's basically what the Lord said. I cannot trust you when you're lukewarm. I don't know how you're going to be. You know, and, and let's just say I have worked with and under women that took their authority. And this is not to um, criticize anyone, but just to kind of give an example. And maybe you have experienced this as well and have taken that role of leadership and have totally destroyed people with their mouth, because that's another thing that we're going to talk about. This tongue of ours, we have to control this weapon. The mouth, this mouth is a weapon. It can be a weapon of destruction or it can uplift people. You know, it can say a kind word. And it doesn't mean walking in leadership that you have to be so cold and hard. Deborah didn't, didn't do that. If that was the case, I'm pretty sure people wouldn't come to her. People all over Israel would not. I'm not going to Deborah because I know she's going to tell me uh, uh, X, Y, and Z and she's going to say harsh things and she's going to tell me this and tell me that. No, I'm not going to her. No, when we're walking in leadership, we have to know how to communicate. We have to know how to use our words. We have to be precise with our words. And we can't cut people down. We can't cut people down with our words. This mouth is one of the smallest members of the body, but it can do a whole lot of damage. If we are not careful, I want to read page. I always like to read at least one page out of, uh, out of the book. And I'm going to read page 59. And it says, women with the Deborah anointing will properly use their tongues. Deborah used hers to speak God's commands to those who needed encouragement to free themselves from oppression. She used cheerful, positive words of victory when God's people face enemies. Her words were wisely selected and people traveled far to hear her speak. Women today can imitate Deborah's speech. How often have you seen a woman totally destroy her effectiveness as a leader because she failed to use her tongue properly. Because of the way Deborah used her tongue, she lifted the spirits of those who needed to be faithful to God. I, at this time, I want to say that Deborah's name means honeybee. A honeybee. You know, the phrase, you can draw more bees with honey. So the sweetness of her words. You know, and but still walked in authority. She still told people what thus saith the Lord. But it's how you say it. It's how you say these things. So we have to govern our mouths. Life and death, the scripture says, in the power of the tongue. So women of God, we have to learn how to tame our tongues. I'm not saying that we have to be quiet. Please hear me. I'm not saying we have to be quiet. I'm not saying that we have to shut up because that is a tool of the enemy. That's one of his fiery darts to try to keep us quiet. I'm not saying that. I am saying that we have to speak wisdom. We have to speak God's insight into the lives of the people that we are around. And especially if we want to walk in this leadership role. 
again, I'm not just talking about ministry, which whatever uh, um, mode of leadership that you are desiring to be in or whether you're in. Some of us are supervisors on our jobs. That doesn't mean that we have to cut people with our tongues. We need to walk in wisdom. Amen? Okay. Really? Because people people want to they want to trust us and we want people to trust us. We want people to uh look at us as accountable. You know, we want people to have confidence in us and we can walk in that level of anointing and that confidence without cutting people down. So let's be wise with our time. Amen. Okay, so the second attribute is courage. Now to walk in this level of authority over people, we definitely have to have the courage to do so. Verse 14 in the scripture. This is past what I read, but this is when it was time for battle. The Lord had given Deborah the word to give to Barak. Barak was the leader of the Israelite army. And Deborah walking in this anointing and this position required her to have a lot of courage. One, because she had to voice uh, God's commands to a male military leader. I don't know if you kind of get that, how, uh, how serious that, that was. It had to have been. And the level of, of courage and power and authority to be able to um, display that and to tell Barak what thus saith the Lord. And listen to verse 14. This is what she said. Then Deborah said to Barak, up, for this is the day in which the Lord has delivered Sisera into your hand. Has not the Lord gone out before you? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. Deborah had to have that type of confidence. And, you know, sometimes I think we lack this level of confidence for whatever, for many reasons, for whatever reasons, because of, you know, our, our upbringing, because of relationships that we've been in, um, you know, someone may have, you know, relationships with men and they may have uh, not been so kind um, in their actions and their words. And our self-esteem can get destroyed. We have to walk in what God has placed inside of us. But we have to know that. It, it's, it's not going to take someone else to tell us who we are. We have to know... The Bible, number one, tells us who we are. The Bible tells us we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We have a place in God's heart. We have a position here on this earth. So as women, we have, to, and this is not walking in arrogance, because Deborah wasn't arrogant at all, but she walked in confidence. And her confidence came from the Lord. We you, Listen. I am married. I love my husband dearly. But I have to be settled and set in myself. Outside of my man. Outside of being a wife. I, I honor that and I respect that. As his wife. And him being head of household. But me, for, for my fulfillment. For my uh, peace of mind. And my stability, I have to know who Keisha is. I have to know who I am. And so I have to have a relationship with God. Because let the truth be told, my husband can decide that he wants to leave at any time. We've been there, women of God. And I'm just talking real tonight. This is totally off of what was going on here. But God, I hear you. Re regardless. 
of where we find ourselves and what, you know, what relationships that we find ourselves in. We have to know God. We have to know him for ourselves because people will come and go out of our lives. And if we put so much energy and so much um, reverence into them, and then they decide that they're going to pick up and leave. And then we're destroyed because they didn't took half of us with them. And here I'm left broken and trying to figure out what my next move is going to be. When, if I had established myself in the Lord, hey, look, you coming into my circle, then you, you're going to have to come into my circle correctly. Because this is what has been established here. So that way I can stand on my feet if you decide. That you want to go somewhere. If you want to hang with me. If we want to do this thing together. We're going to get married. We're going to build a life. Then hey that's great. But even outside of people leaving. People die. You know people lose jobs. People lose their selves. We as we have got to be stable in ourselves. Women of God. Every woman on here. I need for you to hear me tonight. You have to be stable. You have to walk in the courage that you have, and you do have it. You do have it. You got to look deep within yourselves. You have it. You have to align yourself with the word of God and just be firm in where you stand so that you know who you are and the person that comes into your life, whether it be your husband, your fiance, a friend, whomever, then they can look and say, oh, she's, she's established herself. So, I, you know, I, I mean, I'm not going to be able to do but so many things because she already she's already stable. She already knows what she wants. We have to walk in the courage that God has placed in us. He has placed that in us. Women of God, we just got to walk in it. Deborah walked in this confidence. Yes, she had to tell Barak, a male military leader, thus saith the Lord. She had to walk in the calling that the Lord had placed on her. And let me tell you something, in reading that, Barak respected that because he even said, well, look, if <laughs> even though the Lord had gave him instruction, he said, but are you going to go? Because, Deborah, if you're not going, then I'm not going. He respected her her authority, he respected her position, he respected her judgment, he respected her relationship with God more than anything. Because if you're getting instruction from God, woman of God, then I know that I can do what I am set out to do. This instruction that you're giving me that I must do. So even in all of the danger and and all of the uh, the difficulty that they had to face, Deborah walked in this courage. She walked in courage not only to go, but to tell Barat, to give instruction to him, to command him. And this is not being, um, again, we have to walk in wisdom. This is not being trying to rule over the man. She wasn't trying to rule over Barat, but she had to give him instruction from the Lord. You know, as a, as a prophet, I need to work in tandem with a pastor or with an apostle. It's not for me to, to rule over top of them. It's for me to work with them and work in tandem with them. If you are married, it's not for you to, as a woman, to rule over top of your husband, but to work in tandem with him because the Lord may be instructing you in this level of wisdom, women of God. On your job, walking in this wisdom and this courage that God has placed in you. So we, we have influence over, again, our sphere, where we operate in. God has placed us there strategically for that reason. Amen. We are very valuable and we're too, you know, I think we, we don't, um, see ourselves in, in these positions this way. We, we, don't, we don't see our value as much as we should. You know, we are valuable not only to the body of Christ, but we are valuable, valuable where God has placed us because our insight and our heart to please God 
that puts us in these purposeful positions. And God knows that. He puts us in these positions to be influencers, to assist others, to give that level of wisdom, to bring forth what plan that the Lord has. Amen. Again, not to walk in arrogance, but we are to walk in wisdom. We are to walk in the constraints that God has positioned and placed us in. And if we stay in our lanes, and that is not to minimize us, but you know, I have seen it many times when people step outside of their lanes and they're getting into somebody else's lane, trouble arises. Stay where God has positioned you. Stay where God has positioned you and work that lane. Be of assistance to others, but work your lane. Don't step over into a territory or an area that you are not familiar with and that you are not graced to be over in. Stay where you are. Stay in your lane. The last thing that we are going to talk about, we're talking about leadership tonight. It's humility. Hmm. Humility does not mean that you are weak. Humility does not mean that you are weak. Humility means that you understand position. And you understand putting the things of God first. And putting God first. And then all things will follow. Being arrogant and being prideful, the scripture tells us pride comes before the fall. And as clear as I'm talking to you tonight, when you walk in pride, there is going to be a fall. Walk in humility. It's nothing wrong with being humble. It's nothing wrong with being humble. Let's look at Judges 5. Well, I'm going to read it. Um, if you've got your Bibles, you can go there. You can just listen. This is the song of Deborah. Deborah walked in this level of humility in that she did not try to um, overstep Barack. She did not try to um, put him out on front street like, yeah, Barack. The only reason why, um, you know, Israel defeated the Canaanites is because I went with you. Yeah, Barack, you was a coward. You wasn't going to go until I went with you. It's, you know, yeah, the only reason why this plan worked is because I. Walking in humility. We, you know, we're not to... Um, make people feel less than again that's that tongue that's the mouth how are we going to use it are we going to use it as to destroy people or are we going to use it to uplift people this is the song of deborah deborah uplifted she uplifted the lord god is it was because of your greatness god it was because of your direction and your wisdom she uplifted barack Barak, take your men, take your men from, from the tribe of Nephtali and the tribe of Zebulun and go as God had commanded. She even uplifted and gave praise to the woman that the Lord had used to kill the Canaanite military leader. If you know the story, <clears throat> this was Jael was her name and she lured the uh, military leader from the Canaanites, his name was Sisera, into her tent. And he asked for something to do where she gave him milk to soothe him. He fell asleep and she hammered a nail through his temple. A little harsh, but that is what happened. She was used, the Lord used her to bring victory to the children of Israel, to bring Barak and his military uh, troops to victory. A woman was used. That took courage. Deborah exposed in a good way 
the works of JL and what she had done. So Deborah didn't take, this was me. This was, you know, I'm the one that got direction from God. I'm the one that went. I'm the one that said, get up and rot. It wasn't me, 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 me. We are supposed to, the Bible tells us, give praise, give credit where credit is due. If someone is, is deserving of it, why not use your words to uplift them? Why not use your words to thank them? Hey, you did a great job. Hey, you know what? That, 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 that project that you worked on, that was awesome. That, that teaching that you did, that was great. That sermon that you did last Sunday was wonderful. The job you did working with the kids, that was great. Why not? Why not give someone else praise? Let somebody else shine. That's when I say. It's okay, women of God, to let someone else shine. Let another woman shine. That's walking in humility. That's more powerful than, than being prideful. Amen. Compliment each other. There's nothing wrong with that. You look real nice today. I like that dress today. Girl, those shoes. Those shoes are nice, huh? Living vicariously through you. Beautiful. It's nothing wrong with that. If we are in a position to do good, if we are in a position to give, to uplift, to encourage, we are to do that. Women of God, we are, we, again, from last week, we are the voice. We are the voice to do that. So we need, number one, most importantly, we need God's hand upon our lives. We cannot walk in the state of being prideful. We cannot walk in the state that it is all about us. I'm the one that made it happen. There are people that are around you that are connected to you. Say something positive. Feed into them. Nourish them. Be like Deborah. Be the honeybee. Be the honeybee. Give them a little, give them a little honey with your mouth. Let your mouth do the work for you. Great job, sister. I like working with you. Let's do this again. I just want to encourage you. You're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. I want to encourage you. You know what? I see so much potential in you. Girl, you can do it. Be complimentary to others. So the things that we talked about tonight, being a, and this is being a leader. This is being a leader. These are qualities of being a leader. A leader does not mean that you have to be harsh or hardcore. Deborah walked in wisdom. She learned how to tame her mouth. Amen. Deborah walked in courage. She knew what God had placed inside of her and she was confident in her relationship with him because she established herself with prayer and with talking to him and spending time with him. That makes you more, you know, a more powerful woman, even in that. So when people are coming in contact with you, wow, you know what? I like being around her because she, you know, she seems like she's got it all together. I'm wondering what's going, you know, and then people start to inquire. So look, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a mentor or, or you know, I'm looking for someone to uh, lead a group of girls. You never know where God is going to spread your wings. You never know what God is going to do in your life, but we have to be open to it. So these, we have to walk in these things. We have to walk in godly wisdom, giving sound counsel, godly counsel. But how can we give that if we don't talk to God, if we don't pray? How can we tell anybody about God if we don't know about God, if we don't know about him, if we don't know what he's saying, if we don't know what his word says? You know, enough is God is good. That's not enough. That's not enough. That's a cliche. Yes, God is good. Now tell me something else. Tell me something more. Get me off this ledge. 
bring real me help to reel me back in. I need somebody to tell me something. You you know, you walking in this leadership position. I need for you to tell me more than God is good. So walking in that level of wisdom, that's getting to know God, taming our tongues, using our words precisely and correctly. Be the honeybee. And walk in humility, ladies. Walk in humility. Humility does not mean weakness. Humility, that takes a lot of strength to do that. I don't have to overpower somebody. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. But to the Lord, God, who's, who's given me all that I need to walk in this type of anointing. We want to walk in leadership. We have to walk it the way that God has established it. And Deborah is our example. Deborah is our example of how to walk in it. I'm going to end here tonight. I thank you all. I see everybody's popping on. I thank you all. I love you all so much. Thank you for joining me um, tonight. We're going to end here talking about the Deborah anointing. Again, I have three books left. So go to disciplesoffaith.life and go to the prophet's perspective. Leave me a comment on you know, choose any one of the articles. Maybe I'll spread it out a little bit. Choose any one. I just want to give the books away because then I'll have three books of the same sitting here. So leave me a comment. You guys leave your address. Even if you know someone who might benefit, if you receive the book and you know somebody who may benefit, just shoot me a messenger. Hey, you know, Prophet Keisha, I have a friend. Can you send the book to my address and I'll get it to them? Just, I just want to get the books away. I want to be a blessing to somebody. So I have three more left. So just let me know. Amen. So we're going to close in a word of prayer. I thank you all again for coming on tonight. It was such a blessing. Amen. Walk in your calling of leadership, ladies. Amen. Father God, we just thank you so much right now. God, I thank you for each and every person, Lord God, who counted it, not robbery, to join us here tonight, oh God. Father, I know you want to do something amazing in their lives, Lord God. This class, I know, is not by mistake. God, I'm asking that you give them uh, wisdom, Lord God, that you give your women courage, God, and show them how to walk in humility. God, all of these things, Father, is to become a great leader, but it's also, God, to give you glory. It's all about giving you glory in everything that we do. God, we love you. God, we thank you for being merciful. Watch over each and every one of us tonight as we part ways and continue our night, oh God. Let us meditate on your word. God, we give you praise and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you all again so much for joining me here tonight. Next week is our final week. I'm excited, but I'm kind of sad at the same time. But next week, we're going to be talking about the Ruth anointing. That's our last woman um, in the series, Five Women, Five Weeks. All right. So we'll talk then. Be blessed this week. Don't forget, if you know someone who may benefit from the book, just shoot me a little messenger or um, a message and I'll get the books right out to you. All right, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed night. God bless you. Thank you.